Yeah. I'm gonna go with the first one. You definitely want to be the first one, yeah? Is that your final answer? Yeah, it is. Are you sure? Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today we have another 3D test video uh, similar to one uh, that we did a couple of weeks ago in which uh, Rajan attempted 20 3D test questions um, without any revision. Yeah, but this time you've done some revising, haven't you? Yeah. And uh, so our results should be should be better. Hopefully. Should be better. Uh, last uh, in the last session, out of the 20 questions. It was uh, seven you got wrong, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you you got to beat thirteen today. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, uh, the app that um, Rajan is using is a complete 3D test kit app. Um, the link you'll find in and around this video or in the d description below. Any of you that um, still have to practice all your theory, I strongly recommend this app. And you can just trial it out, trial it out absolutely free for three days. Okay, right. Are we ready? Yeah. So we're going to do a smart session. Um, rather than um, choosing any um, certain category, yeah. yeah. Okay, so in the smart session, guys, it just mixes you up um, 20 questions from uh, all the categories, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there any category that you've been uh, struggling with in your revision? Nah, maybe just like, maybe just a few signs and then the odd few questions. Yeah. Okay, cool. Ready? Yeah. Okay, I'll hold the phone up uh, about here so both, both of us can see it. Right then, so uh, the first question. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a, mo a motorcyclist on a windy day? The rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind. The rider may stop suddenly. The rider may be traveling, traveling faster than normal. The rider may be blown in front of you. See, so, uh, I want to say it's the last one, yeah, but... I mean, it does depend on how strong the winds are, but I don't know if a motorbike's really gonna get blown. But I'd say the last one, yeah. You going for the last one, yeah? Yeah. Let's see. Well done. And the next question. What should you, what should you do if the left-hand pavement is closed due to street repairs? Speed up to get past the roadworks more quickly. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Position close to the left-hand curb, or use your right-hand mirror more often. I um, might say it's probably the second one. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Well then. Okay, next question. You see a horse rider as you approach a roundabout. What should you do if they're signaling, signaling right but keeping well to the left? Um, I'd say stay well back because you'd have to give them room. Yeah, so the, the choice is where they're keep close to them, cut in front of them, stay well back or proceed as normal. So you're going for stay well back, yeah? Yeah. Well done. Good start, three out of three so far. Hopefully it stays like this. The questions are pretty easy so yeah, far, yeah. I've been okay. quite lucky. Right. When must, you, when must you use dipped headlights during the day? When you're driving in poor visibility, when you're driving along narrow streets, when you're parking all the time you're driving? I don't think it's going to be... I dip light headlights at the small, smaller sort of lights. Oh, they're your normal lights. Oh, normal, yeah. normal headlights. I'd say a second one. When you're driving... No, 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 the first one, sorry, the first you one. You sure? First yeah. or second? When you're driving in poor visibility? Or no, you're it'd have to be the first one, yeah. Because if you the first one, yeah? Yeah. Because first I was thinking visibility as in eyesight. Ready? Yeah. Well done. Next question. Why is travelling in neutral for long distances known as coasting, which is known as coasting, yeah? Bad driving technique. The engine will run faster. It will make the engine stall. It will cause the car to skid. Or there won't be any engine braking. Isn't, isn't coasting when you don't bring the clutch back up? Yeah, so, so you know you keep it down. Yeah. Uh, so you can either keep the clutch down or you can put it into neutral. Both are the pretty same thing if, you, if you're doing that, yeah. yeah. Because the engine's not working, so engine's not like controlling the wheels. 
I've been inside the first one or the last one. The engine will run faster or there won't be any engine braking. I can tell you that it is one of those two. It is. Yeah. I'm going to go with the first one. You're definitely going to be the first one, yeah? Is that your final answer? Yeah, it is. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going so well. I know. Man. Yeah. Right there, yeah, so there won't be any engine braking during the clutches then. Yeah. yeah, remember on one of our lessons, we've done this. Um, so, guys, those of, you, those of you who haven't been watching Ryden's driving lessons, I think we've had about seven lessons so far, yeah. And um, one of the lessons, remember when I made you keep the clutch down for a bit, and to keep it down, yeah. and I was just, it just kept rolling faster and faster, and you brought the clutch up. Yeah. You could, you could, you could feel that control. Yeah, that, that's what we call engine braking. Okay, okay yeah. Right, next question. What should you do immediately after joining a motorway? Position your vehicle in the centre lane, try to overtake, or stay in the left-hand lane, or readjust your mirrors? I'd say stay in the left-hand lane. Final answer? Yeah. Well done. Right, next question. What should you do if the traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing? Yeah, so let's bring up uh, the picture. So you can see that sign, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So try and understand what that sign means first. And now the question is, what should you do if the traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing? Pull up on the left-hand verge, verge, accelerate past the vehicles in the left-hand lane, slow down, keep a safe separation distance, move across and continue in the right-hand lane. To be fair, I don't know what that sign means, but from the looks of it, it looks like the right hand lane is going to close and everyone will be moving to the left, so I'm going to go with the third one. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Yeah. Well done. So you were right. Sorry about the kids screaming in the background, guys, if you heard that. Yeah, you're right. So you know that sign? Yeah. means in, in a is it 600 and 800 yards that the right hand lane is going to be closed okay. okay yeah next question how do smart motorways prevent traffic bunching by using minimum speed limits by using higher speed limits by using advisory speed limits or by using variable speed limits is traffic bunching like tra just traffic? Yeah, like, you know, cars, like too much traffic building up really. Yeah? yeah. Same thing. So, it keeps the, the car spread out and a good flow of traffic, yeah? I'd say by using... Probably by using variable. Variable ones? Either, ver yeah, variable. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Well then, oh. good. Next question, what should you do about driving if you've been taking medicine that causes drowsiness? Only drive if your journey is necessary. Drive on quiet roads, avoid driving and check with your doctor or ask someone to come with you. It's the third one. I've already seen that one before. Avoid driving and check with your doctor? Yeah. Well done. Okay, next question. Which vehicle is most likely to take an unusual course at a roundabout? A delivery van, a long vehicle, an estate car, or a milk float? The second one. Okay, guys, I think you'd all, all agree, yeah, this has been pretty easy so far. Yeah. <laughs> Th those, these past two I've already done. Okay. I've seen before. Right, next question. How should you drive or ride in areas with traffic calming measures? Yeah, so traffic calming measures could be speed humps. Yeah, or the, yeah. where the road narrows just in a space of one car. Um, so how should you how should you drive or ride in areas with these measures? Yeah, in the centre of the road, with headlights on dip beam, at the speed limit, or at a reduced speed. I'd say, I. Probably the last one. Okay, the last one. I yeah. think all the one above because it's the speed limit, but then you also kind of have to slow down for speed bumps. So I'd, I'd say the last one, yeah. The at a reduced speed, yeah? Yeah. Well then. 
Which document may, may the police ask you to produce after you've been involved in a collision? Your vehicle service record, your vehicle registration document, your theory test certificate, or your driving license? I'd say probably the last one to see, to see if you can actually drive legally. Your driving license, yeah? Yeah. Final answer? Yeah. Well done. Next question. You're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing. What signal will show next? Amber alone, green and amber, green alone, or red and amber? It's either amber alone or red and amber, but I've seen both. I've seen red and amber as well. I'd, I'd say amber alone. Amber alone, yeah? You sure? Nah, or yeah, I'd say, um, I'd say red and amber. What when you change your mind? I don't know your face, you're like, <laughs> you're just looking at me and sort of smiling, so... Red and amber or amber alone, you're going for one of those, yeah? Yeah, I'd say red and amber. Point Lancer? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> I don't, yeah, you just go for it, man. Oh, okay, that's that's good. You were going to go for the amber alone face, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. Is that when it's going from um, amber to green? So, amber alone, yeah? You'll notice when... Um, uh, so, amber alone is just before the red light. Yeah? Oh, so yeah. remember, the steady amber means... It also means stop. Yeah. If it's safe to stop. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, what does this sign mean? Let me just enlarge that. Yeah, so there's a sign. Cars and motorcycles only, no overtaking, no motor vehicles, or clear way where there's no stopping. The first one. Cars and motorcycles only, yeah? Yeah. Final answer? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so it's basically no motor vehicles. I was thinking that, but then I thought it'd have like some sort of line going across it. Okay. Well, you know now, don't you? Yeah. Okay, we're coming towards the end now, yeah? Well, last five questions. You want to turn right from a main road into a side road. What should you do just before turning? Cancel your right turn signal. Check for traffic overtaking on your right. Select first gear. Stop and set the parking brake. We've done this so many times as well. From a main road. So. Obviously, you've been in this kind of driving situation, you're on the main road, turning right. Think of which one would make sense to do as you're, as you're turning right. What, the question, read the question just before turning right, what just would you do? Just before turning. Oh, you jet forward traffic, traffic in on your right. You sure? Yeah. Because you'd already have the gear. Well then, I would have been disappointed if you got yeah. that wrong, yeah. <laughs> okay. What should you do when going through a contraflow system on a motorway? Yeah, so here's the sign. Switch lanes to keep the traffic flowing. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Stay close to the vehicle ahead to reduce queues. Used dipped headlights. I'd say a second one. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Yeah. Well done. How many of you got wrong so far? Is it just the one? Nah, two. Two? Yeah. Why should you never wave people across at pedestrian crossings? One, they may not be ready to cross. It's safer for you to carry on. Another vehicle may be coming. They may not be looking. I'd say it could be a few of them, but it'd have to be a third one. Another vehicle may be coming? Yeah, and it could have. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Well then. What's most likely to waste fuel? Driving on motorways, under inflated tyres, using different brands of fuel, or reducing your speed? Probably the second one. Is that what you're going for? I think so, yeah. Under inflated tyres? Yeah. Well then. Okay, last two questions. You have stopped in an emergency refuge area. What must you do before you rejoin the carriageway? 
switch on your vehicle's headlights, give an arm signal as you're moving off, move away with your hazard lights on, or use the emergency telephone. I think it'd have to you be rejoin like, the joy. It'd have to be some sort of indication, so the second one. Arm signal. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I don't, I don't think it could be that one, to be honest. Well, you know that now, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, always like, uh, the good thing about this app here, yeah, you know, anything that you don't understand, you click this explanation button, yeah? And it just explains, yeah, yeah. the reason. So, to rejoin the carriageway from an emergency refuge area, you must use the emergency telephone and follow the operator's advice. A lane may have to be closed so you can rejoin the carriageway safely. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Right, final question. You're travelling at the legal speed limit. What should you do if the vehicle behind approaches quickly, flashing its headlights? Accelerate to make a gap behind you. Maintain your speed to prevent the vehicle from overtaking. Allow the vehicle to overtake. Touch the brakes sharply to show your brake lights. Uh, the third one. Allow the vehicle to overtake. Yeah. Final question. Well then. Okay, so uh, a lot better than last time. Yeah. Yeah. So only three wrong this time. I got seven on uh, incorrect last time, and yeah. just three three this time. Yeah. Yeah. And you also earned thirty-four le leaderboard uh, leaderboard points. Yeah. Yeah. The, so basically you know once you keep revising you get points and there's a leaderboard just like shown here yeah but this is this is uh, obviously we're not using your app this is uh, my app that I'm using well not my app but um, on my phone so because I don't revise weekly yeah you do you, you'll probably be revising once you start revising you're revising every, every day or every other day yeah, yeah. you're picking up these points and the top three you get you get rewards okay so yeah. just keep uh, keep revising and you'll keep collecting these points and the prize info 35 pound amazon voucher for the for the uh, for the first prize then it's a 20 pound one then it's a 15 pound amazon voucher so not bad at all yeah that's not bad yeah yeah okay well then so this is what we expect. What we were expecting, yeah. A lot of the questions were quite um, uh, easy. Yeah. yeah. What we're going to do next time? I'm going to pick a category. We're going. To, we're not just going to do smart session. We're going to pick a category. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to tell you. Oh, which you're not going to tell me. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to choose one on the day. Okay. Yeah, for our time. next video. So you've got to make sure you're you've covered everything and um, revised. Yeah. Because okay. uh, again, we'll we'll stick to 20 questions. Yeah? Yeah. And you've got to beat 17. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But big improvement from um, uh, the last session. Okay. Yeah. But then, guys, um, hopefully that uh, video helped. Like I said, we will be putting a regular 3D content. And like I said earlier, any of you that uh, need to revise for your theory, um, download the complete theory test kit up yeah and you like I said you you will find the link um, in the description below and like always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video see you guys